Okay, so today we're going to take a look at an example um, using the ambiguous case of sine. Um, so we have triangle ABC, um, and we're given that side A equals 12, side B equals 17, and side A equals 21 degrees. And our job is to find angle B. Um, and more specifically, we're going to find both measurements for angle B. Okay, the reason why I say both measurements is because we actually have two possible scenarios for this triangle. Uh, the first scenario would be that we have some triangle where we have side B being 17 centimeters, um, side A being 12 centimeters, and side C being like an unknown side. Okay, this is side C, so this will be angle C. Uh, I said this was side A being 12 centimeters, and side B being 17 centimeters. Okay, we also know that something is uh, unmovable here. Okay, it's not a variable, which is the 21 degrees. Okay, this is kind of just a rough draft of this uh, first case. We'll call this one case number one. Okay, there's also a second triangle that we can draw with these measurements, though. Um, we have to consider that. Um, okay, so here is my same measurement. Actually, that looks a little bit different. So same angle. Okay, um, this is still the B equals 17. Okay, um, but... I'm going to take this A and I'm going to slide it kind of like inside here. So what ends up happening is that we get the A that's 12, and this is still 21 degrees. Okay, angle A, angle B, and this is angle C, but side C changes. Okay, we don't know what side C is right now. We don't have to find it, actually. Um, in some cases, we may be asked to find it. Okay, we're going to call this case number two. Okay, so you're going to notice we can create two triangles out of the side lengths that we're given um, in this case. So first case number one means that we have an acute angle for B. Okay, And the second case is the case where we have an obtuse angle for B. Okay, so for case one, I'm going to solve this as I would normally solve a non-right angle triangle um, with um, two sides and one of their opposite angles. And this would be... Uh, a case where we could either use sine law or cosine law. Now, because I have this side and its opposite angle pairing, anytime you have that, that should tell you that you're using sine law. Okay, so I'm going to do A over sine A equals B over the sine of B. Okay, uh, lowercase represents side lengths, uppercase representing angle lengths. Okay, let's continue this on the next page. Okay, so you can see here that I have basically just plugged in my values, and what I'm going to do here is just cross multiply to start solving for this. Okay, when we cross multiply, remember that the equal sign stays where it is, and I'm just going to cross multiply the values like so. Okay, and now I just want to get sine of b by itself. So divide by 12, divide by 12, those will cancel. And uh, if you want to go ahead and just calculate this value on your calculator, 17 times the sine of 21 over 12 in degree mode, um, you're going to see that you'll get a value here. So let's just calculate that quickly. Okay, so I got the value 0 0.5076879 and so on. Okay, I'm just going to stick it, like I'm just going to leave it right in my calculator. Okay. Now, we know that this actually has two answers. We just talked about this in the last tutorial uh, where we use the cast rule. So if I'm going to take the sine inverse of a positive value, I know that I actually have an answer in the all quadrant and in the sine quadrant. So one answer between 0 and 90 and another answer between 90 and 180. Okay, so the first answer that I get, I'm going to do the sine inverse of this value. Okay, the one that's still in my calculator, hopefully. If not, you can just recalculate quickly or you can just enter that in. Okay, I'm doing sine inverse right now. And I get 30.5 degrees. Okay, this is my answer between 0 and 90 degrees. Okay, so I just got the answer in the all quadrant, and it was 30.5. Maybe I won't label that just because it's messy. Okay, so I got my 30.5 answer. I need my second answer as well. And that is in the sine quadrant right over here. And it is... 30.5 degrees before we hit the 180 mark. So my case number two is pretty easy to calculate. My second option for B will be 180 minus 30.5. OK, 
okay, which is going to give me 149.5 degrees. And that's my second option. Okay, so first option and second option for case B, uh, or case one and two. Okay, um, sometimes we also should know that uh, when we do ambiguous case of sign, we could actually have a couple different options. We can have uh, two possible answers. Okay, we could have one answer, or we could have zero answers. Um, so two answers happens uh, in a case like this. So you'll notice that uh, the side and the angle combination that we're given, this side is smaller than this side right here. Okay, so if the side across from the angle that you're given is smaller than the additional side, you have two answers. Okay, so let's just write that down here quickly. Okay, so the side across from the given angle, so that matching that you have, that side is shorter than the additional side length that you're given. That's the first option. Second option would essentially be the opposite of that. So the opposite of that would be that the side across from the angle that you're given is longer than the additional side length given. And if that's the case, there's actually only one triangle that you can create, and that's why there's one answer. Okay, so that's our scenario. Um, zero answers can be a little bit harder. Um, in, the, in the beginning, we can predict between two answers and one answer, but there could always be the case where we have zero answers, and zero answers can't be predicted initially. Um, it basically gets predicted um, if we get to this point right here, okay, this point, and we end up taking the sine inverse of a value that is not between negative one and positive one, okay? So um, if you end up trying to take the sine inverse of an answer not between negative one and positive one, you'll end up getting a math error. Um, and that's because that triangle actually does not exist. Okay, so we would end up with some kind of triangle that actually doesn't end up even connecting. Okay, so let me give you an example. Um, we'd end up with like a really long side here, potentially, and then like a little nub here. So that nub will never uh, meet up with this, uh, oops, sorry, um, this additional side down here. Okay, no matter how we rotate it. We could rotate it up or down either way, but it's never going to create an actual triangle. Okay, and that's the case where we get zero answers.